I can feel the spirit. You know, Chandra and I were talking back in the back uh, before we came out here about uh, Misty Copeland, who is going to be performing at the Kennedy Center. And I just thought, I'm sorry, now in New York. And I just thought to myself, Tia is our Misty Copeland of voice. I could dance like Misty in a past life or in my consciousness, and I can sing like Tia. Oh, what a good, what a world we live in, right? I have a vivid imagination, no question. If something disconnects from my brain and my tongue, that, you know, my vocal cords or something, I don't know what it is, but, you know, I entertain myself. And I'm really good at it. You know, we should do more of that. Then the Bible say, make a joyful noise and be ye as little children. So we got to learn how to do that. But, you know, it's ironic as I was um, watching CBS this morning, uh, Sunday morning, that I stood in this pulpit 10 years ago on the Sunday following Katrina. 10 years ago. Not only have we gone through a shift in consciousness from that moment, we have grown so much and so farther that we understand that this wake-up call was not about the flood. It was about an awakening. Sometimes you've heard me say before, God's got to jack you up. In order to get you where God needs you to be, in order for you to do what God would have you do. So I want to share with you this morning, and I am so thrilled and excited that I will be facilitating for the first time the retreat at Capon Springs. And, and I'm so excited about that because. You know, we can get away from all the stuff. And trust me, if you're coming, you will be getting away from all the stuff. To tap into that isness that you are, to become one with that God that lives within you, we've got to stop looking for God out here. And we've got to start reconnecting to the God in here. Your income affects your outcome. And I'm not talking about cash. So we're going to do a little mathematical equation. And we're going to remember put back together what we know for sure, that we were created to do great things. Not some things, not mediocre things, not average things. You were created in the image and unto the likeness of God. That ain't no joke. Therefore, you have a responsibility to live out this life as God created you to do. Sometimes we get distracted because we are turning our attention towards those who would influence the decisions that we do on a daily basis. However, when we income, go within, and tap into that oneness, God don't lie. And if God puts something on your heart, he has also given you a plan and a purpose to get to that desire 
he has for you. Now, let's think about that a minute because we live in such a world now that we want instant gratification externally, but we're not willing to do the work internally. It's easy for us to say and dismiss stuff and say, oh, it is what it is. And that is like nails on a chalkboard to me. When someone says to me, well, you know, it is what it is. And I said, I guess so, if that's what you think it is. But I cancel that stuff out real quick. It is what it is for you. But it is what it is till it isn't. I look back on this 10 years and, and how much we have seen of the evolution or the rebuilding after Katrina in New Orleans. And I don't use this as a judgment or a condemnation, but as they were talking to this one woman who happened to be a white woman from a, a middle-class white community, when she went back, she had lost everything, every single solitary thing. But she lived in a community where her house was built on some kind of stilt. So she was able to rebuild her house, but she could not bear to look outside. She felt comfort inside, but she felt destitute on the outside. Isn't that interesting? She said to her husband, I just don't know if we can stay here. And he said to her, it is what it is. But she said, uh-uh. So it is what it is till it isn't, simply means that she created an organization to help other people find the resources that they needed outside of government support and help. She recognized and realized that the government was not going to be able to do the things that they said they were going to do. So she took it upon herself to create an organization, volunteers, supporting and helping people work their way through. That's your income producing something from your outcome. Do you get that? Now, there are many on the other side of town, through no fault, maybe of their own, who find themselves in a completely different situation and circumstance. But I want to share this with you because in our retreat, we're going to talk about the I am possible dream. And we're, we're going to talk through that through the power of imagination written by Neville. And I don't know if any of you have have ever read his works, but this is what he says. Everything depends on your attitude towards yourself. That which you will not affirm as true of yourself can never be realized by you for that attitude alone is the necessary condition by which you realize your goal. He also says the truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in imagination, your desire will become an actuality. In other words, what you think about, you bring about. What you focus on, expands. That's on you. Nobody can take your dreams from you unless you give them away. It is what it is because somebody else said so? Oh, no, 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 no. If it was placed on your heart, it was given to you by the Lord God that lives within you. Not your sister, 
not your neighbor, not the person that sits across from you in the cubicle trying to get ahead as much as you are. We have to learn to listen to the sweet, still voice and ask God each and every day, what would you have me do? When you ask God the appropriate questions and you ask them in the appropriate way, it is what it is, will always be magnificent. But we allow ourselves to get uh, caught up because it's hard. Or you can't see a way. Or you might fail or fall down. But the witch, the good witch told Dorothy, she said, you didn't have to go through all of this. <laughs> you always had it, knucklehead. <laughs> Yet, the scarecrow had a purpose. The tin man had a purpose. And so did the lion. And that brings me to the formula. And I want you to think about this, write this down, because it will support everything you want to create and manifest in your life. C plus B equals A. Now you can write it A equals B plus C, you, however you want to write it, or whatever way it rolls off you know, for you. But B plus C, I'm um, C plus B equals A. If you can conceive it, plus believe it, you can say it loud, it. say it proud. It. The only thing that keeps you stuck is you. And there's no you in this equation. It is a concept that applies to everyone, man, woman, chick, or child. You ever see a baby on a mission? An infant just beginning to crawl? Or an infant trying to maneuver itself into turning over in a crib? Do you remember that? That takes determination. That takes endless creativity. If I can't maneuver my hip this way and throw my leg over that way, they will fall back on their backs and think for a minute and regroup and say, I can figure this out. Then the leg comes up and it goes over like this. But they are relentless in their pursuit. They conceive turning over. They believe that they can do it, and it doesn't matter how long it takes. They keep on keeping on until it happens. Dorothy had to go through it all. But the scarecrow said, we can do it. The tin man says, in my heart, I believe. And the lion says, in spite of it all, fear not, for I am with you. The strength and the power will get you through. It is what it is until you choose something different. The I am that has sent you here, sent you here with a specific agenda. And we come together in a collective consciousness, our own thread, our own tapestry, standing proud in our position on the quilt, that it would not be if you were not there. But you must be what God created you to be.
Your career is what you're paid for. Your gift is what you made for. Steve Harvey has struck a chord in that mantra. But are you willing to do what it takes to be all that God created you to be? Are you willing? Are you willing to move past your fear? Are you willing to stand in the truth that if you had the thought, it must become a thing? But of course, in miracles says the ego speaks first and it speaks loudest. And God will not interfere with your free will. So your ego was created out of that will that is on a continuing basis jacking you up. So let's see. Conceive. Believe, achieve. Moses was a stutterer. He said, how can I go to Pharaoh? What did he say to him? You tell him I am sent you. You go do what I sent you to do. Scared to death. Yet he gave him a rod, a staff. And oh, Moses was obedient. Joseph spent 13 years in prison for something he didn't do. But he still told the story. Was it is, was it isn't? It is what it is to him? No. Ruth left a life of opportunity to go with the widow, Naomi. She could have said it is what it is. It is what it is till it isn't. She went out in the dark of night picking up wheat in a field, determined to know that if she did what God sent her to do, that God would do what she needed him to do. There's story after story. There could be no resurrection had there not been a crucifixion. So we understand it is what it is till it isn't because we all have that resurrection capability to move through the fire, the chaos and the confusion, to fall down but to have the strength to get up, to walk away from those naysayers, those judgers, those people that are constantly telling you what you can't do, and move into the light of love of those people that support your vision, that believe in your ability. I love doing what I do. I travel this country watching and listening and observing the dreams people have for themselves. And I said, if you can do anything in money and environment and anything, if you could do anything you wanted to do, what would it be? How many people do you believe say, I don't know? You got to find your purpose. Stop accepting it is what it is. Make your life a beacon of light for all the world to see. Money does not make you rich. Who you are to this world, the contribution that you make, is what you were sent here to do. Dr. King said, if you're gonna be a garbage sweeper, be the best one. 
Let people say, man, have you seen? You can tell when John or, or Jill or, or Joe has been on this street. They have a signature. Be the best at whatever it is you do. Seek to find your purpose. Ask God each and every day, what would you have me do? That's a quick way to shut up your ego. You know, if you ask, give it a, 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 a um, question, it has to seek to find the answer. So when you say, God, what would you have me do? The files go into hyperdrive. Now, you may have to sift through and delete, 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 delete some of them to get to your I am folders. Okay? I am capable of doing all things. I am grateful. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I'm an example of what joy is. Making your declarations after you are sifting through these files that tell you that you are not worthy. Who came up with that anyway? You are not worthy. Based on whose criteria? You know? So I, 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 wanna, I wanna leave you with this. God is everything you are. The only difference between you and God is God created you. You didn't create God. But if God said you were created in God's image and likeness, then there's no way you could ever fail at anything. You may have to walk through the valley. So what? You got feet ankles, knees, thighs, hips, designed specifically for that purpose. If you got to swim the ocean, you got arms and legs designed for that purpose. The journey of a thousand miles begins with, and if you don't take that step, it is what it is. <laughs> so as you go out this week, I want you to put your attention on your intention. I want you to create something today. I want you to create a C plus B equals A. One thing, just one thing. And I want you to focus on that one thing for the next seven days. One thing. If that is to walk around the block, or if that is to be on time for work every day, one week, just one week, put your attention on your intention. And see how God will work in your life. God is always available to you and to me. And when you get into act three of your life, you will begin to realize how often you call on him. You don't have to tell me it is what it is because I understand and I recognize who I work for. And he has never written me a bad performance appraisal. Every job increase, finance, financial increase, I've been given that. When God has a place for me to go, he provides the resources for me to get there. So you see, I'm not dependent on any egoic, dysfunctional person with an agenda all their own. I'm dealing with the light of God that surrounds me, that love of God that enfolds me, that power of God that protects me. Because wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Thank you.